All right. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to Ask an Advocate. My name is Eliza Farrow. I use they, them pronouns, and I am the EDI Student Services Coordinator for the Women's Center at UW Oshkosh. And um, myself and Kim Helmquest, I'll let her introduce herself quick. Hi, everyone. My name is Kim Helmquest. I am the Health Promotion Manager at the Student Health Center. Awesome. So the two of us have planned this Ask an Advocate series for Sexual Assault Awareness Month for this April. Um, so we are super excited today to have Gabrielle with us from People of Progression. So I am just going to start off here by um, allowing you to introduce yourself, Gabrielle. Um, if you want to give us your name, your pronouns, if you're comfortable, how long you've been with your agency, and maybe a little bit about your educational background or your path to working there. Yes, well, I'm Gabrielle, and my pronouns are she, her. Um, I have been with People of Progression for about two years now. I started as a volunteer, then I transitioned to a more permanent position as an assistant executive director. Um, and um, I graduated from Appleton West here in Appleton, Wisconsin. I am originally from Los Angeles, California. Um, and I was, I got with People of Progression because I worked for Taper's Barbershop as well as a hairstylist. And Kane and Davenport, amazing man, started speaking about it. And I saw opportunities to be able to volunteer. And it went from there. It just blossomed. And now I am where I am and I couldn't be more happier. Awesome. Do you want to tell us just a little bit more about people progression, what you all do there, um, and uh, how you advocate for sexual assault survivors? Um, maybe some examples of what your job duties are or um, what uh, a survivor advocate might do with uh, people of progression. Yes, well, People of Progression, um, we are a nonprofit that advocates for people of color. Um, and really anybody um, who is going through something and needs help. Um, but we, so a victim survivor advocate ensures a safety and trust with the victim or the survivor, um, creating a safety plan to help the victim or survivor move on from the trauma, uh, being, bringing resources for whatever is needed to um, keep them away from the perpetrator and to start the healing process. Um, and that's what we are here to do. And I could, like, I enjoy what I do. It is, it is, it's amazing. Awesome. Um, so what does advocacy look like for you and how do you incorporate it into your role with People of Progression? Um, advocacy means uh, being versatile to each individual situation, making sure I diversify my skills to give the best support for each varying situation. Um, not all situations are the same, and you can't go into every situation thinking that one answer is going to help everything. You're going to come is going to come from all angles. And you have to be prepared for that. Um, and that's what it is. Mm. Thank you. Um, so I know you talked a little bit about this when you were kind of talking about people of progression, but um, do you offer any culturally specific services? Um, if so, what are some examples of those? Yes. Um, people of progression offers emotional focus groups um, for people of color. Um, we offer women identifying groups and Black men talk groups to allow safe spaces to be who they are. Whoever you feel that you are deep down in your soul, we are here to accept it all. Um, and so we also have, um, I personally run a hair class with People of Progression where I get to teach parents on hair maintenance for their children and also talking to biracial adults um, who would like to learn more about their curls and coils. 
um, especially being in this area, a lot of people are unaware on how to maintain their hair. Uh, and there's a lot of people who don't realize that when you look good, you feel good. And it starts from your head and down to your feet. And um, we, we try to cover every aspect that we can. It's not just, it's, it's all we have inside and we have outside. And there's ways to better yourself no matter what it is. Awesome. I really like that. Um, and it, it's a really nice um, to bring in your your past perspective um, with like the hairdresser aspect. And yeah, definitely. That's really cool. Um, so how do you commit to equity within your agency? Um, so we make sure that we screen who is allowed in the organization. Um, we want to make sure that everybody is heard. So um, we want to make sure that everybody is held accountable, not just for ourselves, but the work that we do. Um, we want to make sure that everything is well documented, keep track of every dollar to make sure it's being used correctly. Um, we also make sure to partner with organizations that hold the same values that we have and um, operate in similar ways to, that we do. Uh, we don't want to pass on a client to um, another organization that could potentially cause trauma. So we make sure that who we're partnering with, we all have very similar values and we are all working towards the same goal to, at the end of the day, make sure that our client is bettering themselves and knows how to be heard and speak up. Um, and if they can't speak up, that's what we're here for, to make sure that we do whatever is needed. Awesome. Um, so before we get into some of these other questions, um, I'm curious. So if somebody were to reach out and needed some help with advocacy around maybe like um, a, a dating violence or, um, you know, sexual assault type stuff, like what are some of the resources that you would point them towards or what are some of the other the other things that you um, provide, some other services that you provide in those regards? Um, so depending on the situation, um, we would partner um, with whoever it may be, um, Sorry, that's a little hard to answer because I know that. Yeah, like there's said, a lot of different avenues. One, yeah, there's yeah. not one um, answer for every situation. Um, I guess maybe to give you some clarity. So if, if a, a student was having some issues and wanted to come talk to somebody out in the community, right, about things that were happening to them, um, what what could they expect to like, you know, so so that they feel more comfortable kind of, you know, stepping into those kind of situations, what might they expect as some kind of like routine things? For us. Oh, yes. Um, so um, depending on who the person is, um, like I said, we do have a, we have a Black Men Talk group as well as a um, Sister United group where you can come and talk and be open. You, if you need a one-on-one, -on -one, that is totally fine. Um, you can pull us to the side, send us an email or stop into the office to have that conversation. Um, and then we go from there. But step one is let us know what is going on so that way we can figure out, okay, okay, you said this. I know that, I know this organization can help you with, um, um, being more confident or or you may um, need to figure out how to get out of a situation um, we have we have resources for that if you just need somebody to talk to we're here for that and a lot of times um, just a conversation would help a conversation is, is, is a great is a great start I should say um, and that's and that's so yeah that's, that's how we will handle that awesome. Um, I'm really interested in those those two different kind of like talk groups you're talking about. So um, what is it just kind of like in general things that are going on or is it related to any topic or do you have topics for different weeks or? Um, so sometimes we have people that come, 
just show up just to show up. Um, they don't know, they know that they want to talk, but don't know what to say. Yeah. Um, so sometimes we do have conversations uh, or, or questions and say, well, it starts as, how are we feeling for this, for this past week? Or how are you feeling right now? Um, if, if nobody's talking, um, then I'm a talker. So I'll start talking about whatever is going on in my life, hoping that um, the other people will start to relate or feel a little more open since somebody has opened up. Um, so I try to lead by example. Um, and um, that's just for the Sister United group. We also have the um, Black Men Talk group and um, the same thing goes for them. They, you, you're you're here. We are here to listen, mm -hmm. not just listen. We don't, we're not here to. You won't watch it go through one ear and out the other. We are listening listening to intent to help. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the reasons why I like to work. I like working for people of progression. So we all in uniform love to help, and it's not just listen. We're not we're not just oh okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, next person, no. You told us your story. Here's a resource. Here's what we have for a rebuttal. Um, and if that is not satisfying, let us know and we will continue to help. Yeah, that's really awesome. It really sounds like people of regression works to really help in all facets revolving around um, like racial equity or racial justice issues. Um, and I think that's super important. And sometimes also just having a space um, to be in community. So um, I, I myself am white. I'm not a person of color. However, I do belong to the LGBTQ plus community. So I do understand how important it is to have a community to go to yes. and be a community with and just be able to talk about what's going on. And so um, I think it's really exciting that your organization is kind of filling that that gap in those needs and then helping problem solve when there are issues going on. Yes, thank you. Awesome. So um, what are some joys you've experienced working in your role? So um, it's always a smile. It's always a smile at the end, um, whether it's helping a um, survivor or a victim and I can get a little laugh out of them, you know, and, and, and try to put some type of ease into the situation or um, even from when I'm helping with the uh, children that come in and need their hair done, um, I can always see confidence in them once we're done. No matter what we are doing with people progression, there's always a confidence that is left in our clients. And that's definitely the best part of what I do because um, this area lacks confidence. Um, there, and, and we can't continue to allow our sisters and brothers to um, go walk around with their head down and shoulders down. Oh, be confident in who you are um, and what you're saying. And if you feel like you're not confident enough, I'm here to help. We are here to help and, and be that, that megaphone. Well, they said they were hungry. We're here for that. <laughs> and that's what I love to do. That sounds great. Um, so what are some of the challenges you've experienced then working in your role? Um, I don't like to leave, leave a leaf unturned and sometimes I feel like I can't get it to turn over. Um, and, and it's hard cause I'm like, like I said, not every situation is, is different. Um, so right when you think you have it, then it's an obstacle course for not only our clients, but it's also an obstacle course for myself because I feel like, oh, well, I have everything. I know how to maneuver around and then I come to one bump in the road. And so I have to make sure that I get over that bump to make sure, and then I'm like, okay, I found it. I found it, we got it. But sometimes it's, it does hurt my feelings. I take it a little personal sometimes, I'm like, man, 
You mean to tell me there's no resource for this? There's what? We got to start something. We have to do something. And then luckily, um, because of the great partnerships that we have, sometimes we, we try to, we make it happen with, with a string. We make it happen. <laughs> um, but it, 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 it is, it does hurt sometimes to know that uh, I have to use a bolder weight to really move that, that leaf to make sure that everything is taken care of. Yeah, so then kind of like working off of that. Um, so when things are challenging or just, you know, I this kind of field working in can be a lot of stress, a lot of, you know, um, emotional labor. Um, so what do you do for self-care to prevent vicarious trauma? So um, I attend the Sisters United group for myself as well. <laughs> um, and I'll just talk about whatever is going on with my personal life. Um, but to make sure that I'm not dealing with the vicarious trauma, I try to leave it right where it is. Um, I can't, I, I tell myself, you can't take on everything. You can't take on everything. It is okay. Some some people get to squeeze through. Some people have to push through. And, and that's something that just happens. Um, so I go through a lot of affirmations for myself. Make sure I, I let myself know that I am heard. Um, this is just a stop in the road. We're going to get through this. Um, because it's, it's hard to not feel some type of empathy towards what is going on with our um, clients. So um, I have to remind myself, don't take it personal, you know, because um, yeah. then, then you got to take it to the end. And it's like, okay, wait, you know, this is not for you. This is for, you have to remember the victim or the survivor can hold so much and and does it mean that they can? I can hold the same. Mm -hmm. So I want to. I always make sure that I just leave it in the office and leave leave the situation there. That's why I like to close. I call it closing the deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I I like to just get it done so that way I know that we we're just elevating each time, mm -hmm. each time, and I'm not going to stop until that leaf gets turned up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's something that um, a lot of our students can relate to. And we've got a lot of folks in like nursing and social work and stuff like that. And, um, you know, trying to to leave work at work. And I think that can be a struggle sometimes. Um, because, you know, a lot of us, we, we care a lot or we're really invested in what we're doing or um, it's part of our own communities or our identities and our lived experiences, right? And so, yeah, being able to kind of take that step back and leave work things at work is, is a really important skill. So, um, how can so how can individuals folks who who are watching this video or um who are on the call with us now um who aren't in obviously a formal like advocate um role how can they support um first of all how can they support uh survivors or victims of like assault and abuse but then also just in generally because your organization is, is a lot more broad than that right how can we help support um like racial equity things or um help support those uh folks of color in our community especially if we are not folks of color ourselves so um the biggest thing is to listen um don't listen to just to respond and get it out the way. Don't listen like it's a mom or dad telling you what to do or an aunt getting on you. You have to listen so that way the other person knows that you are paying attention and they are heard. You can lose somebody by a simple eye roll or a yawn, believe it or not, um, 
shifting your eyes while someone is talking um, and they're telling you their story, they're pouring out to you. There's a reason why they, they're talking to you. They have some type of trust in you. So take that and realize that that is a, a huge step for them to even be able to open up and say something. Um, and then from there, if you're unsure on how to help, um, there's, there's resources around. No matter where you are and what you're doing, there are always resources. It does not hurt to say, I hear you. Unfortunately, I don't have an answer. But if you don't mind, I, I don't mind. I would love to work with you to go find an answer. Um, or I heard, I know that it, representation matters. And um, I would say that what you're going through, you would need somebody that looks like you to help understand a little bit better. Um, and it doesn't hurt to say that at all. It's okay if you don't know. Don't lie about it, though. Don't make it. Don't make it seem like you have the answers. You don't, and it's okay. If all you can do is, is be there to listen, be there to listen. Be there to hold someone, be there to hug someone, um, to hold their hand. And, and that's a huge step. It's, it means a lot. And um, that's, that's really all that I can say is to make sure you're listening and then go from there. Um, be open and be, be um, purposeful with your actions. Be helpful if I unmute myself. Um, yeah, I, I think all of that is, is really important. Um, being truthful, um, obviously, if you don't know the answer and being able to just listen. And I think that, you know, being um, really honored that that person is telling you that story, right? It usually means they trust you. They have some value in that relationship. And so it's really important to try and listen. I also really like what you said about listening um, to actually like listen and not listening to respond. Cause I think that's something that happens far too often um, in our society nowadays is like, we're listening, we're trying to formulate a response in our head instead of like actually actively listening and hearing that person and then trying to come up with, with think solutions or whatever it is with them. So I think those are really awesome. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share about yourself, your role, your organization? Um, well, I will say that, um, like I said, representation matters. And um, if, you feel, if anyone feels that it's best to refer someone that looks like them, take that step um, because it, it looks different. We can go through very similar things, but with our backgrounds, the responses are different. Um, the trauma is different. Uh, how things, go about it. We have, we have to worry about our family backgrounds as well. Um, so I just want to say, just be mindful if you are someone who does not work for an agency, but just wants to let their friends know that you are to be trusted. Make sure that you take, you, you mean that, um, because that's a, that's a big step. Um, other than that, I, I Thank you guys for allowing this platform for everyone. This is amazing. And I definitely thank you for inviting myself and people of progression um, on this platform to be able to talk with you guys. Awesome. Yeah, we really, really appreciate you being here too. We're always looking for um, more resources, more folks we can connect people with. So um, that's been really great. Um, I would like to, if you're all right with it, open it up to if anybody has any questions. Um, and you can feel yes. free to write those in the chat. Um, in the meantime, I did think of one additional question. Um, so if we wanted to help support uh, people of progression as an organization, what could we do? 
Um, there's a various amount of ways. Are you talking about for like other organizations or just people in general? Just people in general. Yeah. Um, so you can always give us a call or go to People of Progression on Facebook and send us a message. Um, you can always send us an email at info at peopleofprogression.org. Um, you can volunteer for a lot of the um, activities that we have going on, especially with the fact that the sun is coming up. Yay. And the weather is getting better. Um, we um, will have a lot more volunteer opportunities going go about. We do have, uh, we're looking to volunteer for the circus that will be at Lambeau Field um, at the end of this month. So please reach out for that. Um, we also have a back to school event that will be at the end of August where we um, give away haircuts and um, hairstyles and give away backpacks. Last year we gave away over 600 backpacks that were stuffed, they weren't just empty. There's some really nice ones too. Um, um, other than that, please feel free to stop by. You can drop off hair products as well. Um, Cause that is some in hygiene products. That is something that we do offer to our clients that are in need. Um, if you have any questions about the list, you can give us a call. Um, let's see if there's something else. But for the most part, you keep an eye out on our Facebook page. You will see a lot of activities coming about since the weather is getting better. Awesome. Well, that's super exciting. And I did put in the chat the um, the website for People of Progression. And then Kim put in the Facebook and that email address. Thank you very um, much. Yeah, thank you. All right. Anybody have any last questions or comments before we um, sign off today? All right, I don't see anybody typing. So thank you so much for being here, Gabrielle. Um, again, this is a series that um, we are continuing throughout the month, every Wednesday from 12.40 to um, 1.40. So um, we'll have another agency next month. Um, Max, what is the YouTube channel for this? Is um, the UW Oshkosh Women's Center YouTube channel. Um, I will find it here and put it in the chat. Um, but thanks everyone for being here and thank you, Gabrielle and people of progression. Thank you so much. Please invite me back whenever is needed. Absolutely. <laughs>